Hey, welcome back to another edition of Lucia Capital Group Weekly. I'm Johnny Dean. I feel privileged. Look at jumping in as host, uh, content director, of course. You see me with Professor Rick Plum on our webinars, our webcast. You hear us on our podcast and all that stuff. But here we go again with another week of Lucia Capital Group Weekly. I do feel privileged to be here and equally privileged to be here with me. May I say, Professor Plum, I know you are. Uh, Professor Rick Plum, our Certified Financial Planner Professional and uh, Chief Financial Planning Officer for Lucia Capital Group. You've been busy these last uh, few weeks, of course, Professor Plum, going over people's plans and doing all that stuff. Uh, but have you noticed people skittish with all this market ups and downs that we've seen really for the last 60 days? People that we deal with have a plan of action. They know what it is, their bucket strategy, their investment strategy. And so those people are just kind of on autopilot. It's people from outside that we haven't worked very much with that are coming in. And there's two camps. It's not just the skittish, the scared, the people that are worried about what's going to happen and losing all their money. Uh, there's people on the other side. And this is them saying, and I'm not going to put my personal opinion in this, but they're saying, I believe that once the world opens back up, the economies are going to go back on. So I want to invest everything in right now. And <laughs> so there's either that camp or the other side that you mentioned, the skittish ones that are like, Oh, the sky is falling and it's going to, we're going to hit that second wave and the numbers are going to skyrocket. And this is just crazy. People aren't wearing their masks. Oh no. And so they're afraid and they want to pull everything out of the market. And it, it just goes back to, well, what is it that you're trying to accomplish in the first place? Well, are you, exactly. I mean, since, since I closed down Vegas, is this your, is this your new Vegas? <laughs> I, we, we hope not, but I think some people look at the stock market that way. So here's what I want to talk about, as you may have guessed. I want to talk about the five things that you must consider before investing in any type of market. Now, this isn't things like, well, where's the PE ratio? And, <laughs> and I mean, that, that can be important. But here are the, here's what I want to focus more on, Professor Plum, the five personal things things about yourself that you really need to ask yourself or at least consider before you invest in the market. Let's run down these very quickly. And I think you know exactly where I'm going. First off, I would say time horizon. Well, time horizon is very important when investing. And it makes the difference between investing and speculating, investing and gambling. Because a lot of people that are on the side of the aggressive side today, where they're saying, I really think this market is going to recover. So I want to be part of this. Well, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. And are you willing to accept the loss and that what is your time? Normally investing requires a long enough time horizon so that if you're wrong on your timing, that you can be sort of forgiven for that sin by letting the markets recover over time. And so investing requires a certain amount of time to make it an actual yeah. investing strategy rather than just a gambling so, so in other words, if you need the money, if you have a chunk of money and you need it in the next one year, two years, even five, six, seven years, this may not be a good thing to consider putting all the money into the market. Oh, definitely not. Because if you need the money, especially if you need the money in a year, you know, I don't know what the odds are, 50-50 that it goes up or goes down over the next year. I, I mean, who knows what those odds are, but it's not great odds. I mean, there are, a, 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 there's at least a, a, a sizable amount of odds that you will lose money. And that is not why people invest for the most part. They make they invest to make money. But the longer your time horizon is, seven years, 10 years, like, and people will talk about, well, is now a good time to invest? We hear that all the time. We hear it more now because the volatility is a little exaggerated. Is now a good time to invest? Well, it's a better time to invest now than it was in February. And people were pretty happy about investing in February. They were all gung-ho about the market then. Now that the market's down, however much it's down, now they're afraid? Heck. Well, yeah. And as you said, the longer your time horizon, the less it really matters if you did it in February or March or April or whatever. But this is why time horizon is important. You have to consider that. Here's right. another thing you need to talk about. Your, I guess, your attitude, your investment attitude. How would you characterize that? Well, I was the attitude and the time horizon go kind of hand in hand in there because your attitude is, are you, are you afraid that you're going to miss out on the upswing? Or are you afraid that you're going to lose money? And both of those attitudes are very real. Both of those, uh, both those sides of the equation, which one drives you more? I, I know people, and it has to do with risk tolerance and things, but are you, can you handle the, the fact that you could be wrong? Some people don't want to be wrong. Oh, and sure. unfortunately, because they don't ever want to be wrong, they never make any decision. They never get in the market. Uh, so can you handle being wrong? 
Can you handle the loss if it goes down? Um, on the other side, if you were to be on the cautious side and you get out now, are you going to be really upset that you missed out on what could be an upside, up, upswing if it happens? Yeah. So and, what is your attitude towards that dollar that you're putting into it? Are yeah. you afraid to lose it or are you afraid to not make money on it? Well, we saw that as you, you know, there were people who did jump into the market in January. They said, hey, things are going great, right? Everything's beautiful. Well, they saw what happened in February and March and all that stuff. And many of them jumped out, I would assume. A lot of people did. But yes, your attitude is important. But again, this does go back to time horizon. If you've got a long time horizon, do you really care? Well, and do you really have that long time horizon? And will you stick with that long term time horizon? You may say, yeah, I really don't need this money. I'm, I'm 45. It's in my IRA. I don't need it for 15, 20 years. So I have a long term time horizon. But will your attitude let you stay with it if it goes down by 15 or 20 percent? Well, will, your, will you be able to handle it? Will you can you stay with a strategy or will your emotions dictate what you do? Well, and that goes hand in hand with the third thing that I want to bring up about you th that you need to consider personally, and that is your appetite for loss. We kind of just talked about it here. What is your appetite for loss? Everybody has an appetite for gain. I think everybody would love to see some gain, but what is, how do you feel about losing money? And, and how you feel about losing money, really, you have to understand that so that you understand how you can invest for hopefully making money. Because I have met people through the years that they're very comfortable making money, but they really hate losing money. And unfortunately, when they start losing money, they can handle it for a little bit, and then they bail out, usually about the time that the markets turn around. Yeah, and they wind up hurting so they, themselves. They, they, they convince themselves in their brains that they've got a long-term time horizon, but their stomachs and their hearts come back and say, I can't handle it. I got to get out. Well, and again, these are back the emotional things we have to get control of because to be an investor, you've got to pretty much take some of that emotion out of it or all of it. Absolutely. At least as much as you can. And that's one of the reasons I think that a financial advisor could be a good coach in this particular situation. You need a sounding board. It is. It's great. And you, you say, okay, take the emotion out of it. I think maybe at least the advisor can give me some non-emotional, more rational advice. Maybe. I don't know. Depends and going back to, if you have, I mentioned the third class of people, the people that have a strategy that are looking at this thing, oh, this is interesting, mm -hmm. but it doesn't affect me. My income is fairly stable for the next X number of years. I don't have to worry about the market for 10 or 15 years. I have faith that at some point there's going to be an upswing and we'll We'll keep track, we'll monitor to see when we're in a positive position, positive plus maybe what we expected. And that's when we'll take our profits. But that's because they have a strategy. They know the purpose for every dollar in their portfolio. And they know what to expect from every dollar in their portfolio. And they're okay with it. They know well, that yes. those growth dollars can go down. And they can go down by quite a bit. Uh, but they can go up. And we don't know what's going to happen next. So they've the strategy helps you take that emotion out of it. Takes takes your appetite. You understand it. Not all your money is invested for long term growth, so you can isolate that and say that money. I, I know what to expect from it, but this money over here, I also know what to expect from this. This money is highly liquid, very low volatility. It's money I'm going to spend. I'm going to take out and spend over the next five seven years, and I'd also know it's not going to make a lot of money. But you know what? Not making a lot of money over the last three months was still better than what the mar markets did, which was lose money. It sure did. Now, what you're talking about is the fourth thing that I want to mention, which was the goal for the money. What is your goal for this? Is this is your goal to-, to, for run, to front running all this. <laughs> well, that's all right. Because you know where I'm going and I know where you're going. Uh, what, is this money that, that, that you want to see grow to the skies? Is this money uh, you know, for your heirs? This is part of the decision process that you have to have. The goal is very important and people will look at, well, my portfolio is there to provide me with income. Well, not every single dollar in that portfolio is going to be pushed to making you income. It, some of it needs to be pushed to making you growth unless you're 85, 90 years old and you don't need growth in your portfolio. But so it, it has to do with your allocation. So we have to identify the need for each dollar in the portfolio and the need will be different. Some of the money is to spend in the next year or two or three. Time horizon. Oh, this thing goes whole, full circle. Back to the very first thing we talked about. What's the time horizon with this amount of money? This amount of money right here, I need that to spend over the next year or two or three or, or whatever it is. This money over here, 
I don't need that money for because I've identified the goal for that money, and that's for when I'm 80. And or you know, so if you're in that 20 year old range, most likely the majority of this money is going to be for that longer term area. If you're 60, 65, 70, 80, you're going to have some of that money in the safer areas because when the markets go down, it's not a matter of if, it's when. We just saw that. We saw it twice, two big downturns in the last couple of years, and people have already forgot about the 2018 downturn. You know, for Christmas we had. Uh, they don't even remember that happened. You know, but we had it, and now we've had this, uh, this downturn. It's all about what we, we never want to be put in a position where our spending needs force us to sell assets when they're down. Yeah, and, and when I, I say our spending needs, our known spending needs. As a retiree, we know what our spending needs for the most part are going to be. We never want to put ourselves in a position where we know we need that 5000 a month, 3000 a month, whatever number it is per month. And to get that, I have to sell assets to get it. Because exactly those assets we, yeah. could be down, and I do not want to sell when they're down. That's exactly what we aim to prevent when we put this strategy in. Now, as we're running out of time, the last thing I want to mention here uh, has to do with your, your really your investment style. <laughs> and to me, this means if I got a chunk of money, am I going to put this all in the market right now because it's a good time to do this? Or is my investing style more, let's be a little more cautious perhaps and do this in a sort of dollar cost averaging, invest this over the next 12, 16, 18 months. And this can come in multiple fashions. Somebody who just inherited some money a fairly large block of, of cash, basically. And so the question is, and they've identified that a certain amount of that money can be invested for the next 15 years. Do they take the entire block and put it in up front right now? Or do they say, you know what, this is kind of a kind of crazy times, kind of volatile. Maybe I'll put some of it in now. I'll put more of it in in three months. I'll put more. I'll take about a year to stage it in. And the reason they want to do that is because they really don't like the downside. They understand they need growth. They understand they want growth. But if they put it all in up front and it goes down, that's going to hurt them emotionally quite a lot. Whereas if they put it in, in stages and the market goes up and they miss out on some of that up, they're okay with that. I mean, obviously, they'd rather have it all in for the upside, but they can't. we can't promise that it's going to go up. And so they're better off they're they're more comfortable with missing out of some of the upside than accepting all the downside yeah and there's no right way or wrong way to do it really because you don't know what the future brings it all is more your own emotional state how do you feel about it what type of investor are you what's your appetite for loss and what's your appetite for missing out on potential gains as well uh but, we're out of time oh yeah. darn i was gonna say but for people okay, that go are ahead, go ahead. Cost well, averaging, doing their 401ks this is a great time to be going to the growth side of things with their money coming out of their paychecks. Unfortunately, we've seen people say, well, I'm gonna stockpile money in my safe accounts until I think the market's at the bottom, then I'll move it in. Uh, you're never gonna make that work for you. So far, nobody's been able to show me that they've been able to do that. Dollar cost average, your ongoing contributions. It makes more sense. It is, it may, this could be a wonderful time potentially to keep your 401k. In fact, if you have any extra money, maybe you do, at least dollar cost average while the prices are somewhat low. Although professor, are they still low? I mean, if you're watching now, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We saw a bounce back, a big drop. We're out of the, we're still in a bear market, I guess. It's we just impossible some, to figure out. We see some big percentage movements from day to day. <laughs> Um, Volatility, that's the name of the game, but that's where that can help you. And of course, having a strategy. All right, we talk more about this stuff. Uh, if, if, if you want any more information, you want to talk to Professor Plum, a lot of you already have his contact information, but you can do it there at luciacap.com. You can also give him a call at 800-644-1150. Talk to him there. Also, don't forget our podcast. We do a podcast every single week, Professor Plum and I. We do this in seasons, so we got a couple more this season, but if you want to learn more about it, listen to the podcast, subscribe, you go to luciacap.com, luciacap.com. Professor Plum, I thank you again. Always a pleasure to be with you. We will grab you next time. We will see who's here in the hot seat uh, next week. But until next time, I'm Johnny Dean for Professor Plum, Ray Lucia Jr., and the rest of the staff and folks at Lucia Capital Group. We'll talk to you again soon.